Six miles from Urfa, an ancient city in southeastern Turkey, a man named Klaus Schmidt made one of the most startling archaeological discoveries of our time. Massive carved stones about 11,000 years old, crafted and arranged by prehistoric people who had not yet developed metal tools or even pottery. The megaliths predate Stonehenge by some 6,000 years. The place is called Gobleki Tepe, and Schmidt, a German archaeologist who had been working there for more than a decade, is convinced it's the site of the world's oldest temple. At the site, standing stones, or pillars, are arranged in circles. Beyond, on the hillside, are four other rings of pillars. Each ring has a roughly similar layout. In the centre, there are two large stone T-shaped pillars encircled by slightly smaller stones facing inward. The tallest pillars tower 20 feet and weigh between 7 and 10 tons. Some of the pillars are blank, while others are elaborately carved. Foxes, lions, scorpions and vultures abound, twisting and crawling on the pillar's broad sides. Prehistoric people would have gazed upon herds of gazelle and other wild animals. Gently flowing rivers, which attracted migrating geese and ducks, fruit and nut trees and rippling fields of wild barley and wild wheat varieties such as emmer and einkorn. At the time, the area was like a paradise. Indeed, Gobleki Tepe sits on the northern edge of the Fertile Crescent, an arc of mild climate and arable land from the Persian Gulf to present-day Lebanon, Israel, Jordan and Egypt and would have attracted hunter-gatherers from Africa and the Levant. Strangely, there is no evidence that people permanently resided on the summit of Gobleki Tepe itself. It is believed that this was a place of worship on an unprecedented scale. As Klaus Schmidt put it, humanity's first cathedral on a hill. Gobleki Tepe continues to be a source of fascination and intrigue for archaeologists, historians and the general public. The site challenges traditional narratives of human history and prompts us to re-evaluate our understanding of the capabilities and social structures of ancient societies. The sheer scale and complexity of Gobleki Tepe raises questions on how a hunter-gatherer community was able to organise and coordinate the construction of such a monumental structure. One of the key features of Gobleki Tepe are the elaborate carvings found on the T-shaped pillars. These carvings depict a variety of animals, such as lions, bulls, snakes and birds, as well as abstract symbols and geometric patterns. The symbolism and meaning behind these carvings are still not fully understood, but they likely held significant religious or ceremonial importance for the builders of Gobleki Tepe. According to some archaeologists, these animal figures are described as symbols of different tribes who visited the temple. The presence of these intricate carvings suggests a level of artistic expression and cultural sophistication that was previously not attributed to hunter-gatherer societies. The discovery of Gobleki Tepe has also raised questions about the social organisation and labour practices of the ancient people who built it. The construction of such massive stone structures would have required a large workforce, as well as advanced planning and coordination. It is possible that the building of Gobleki Tepe brought together people from different communities, fostering social connections 
and cooperation on a scale not previously thought possible for hunter-gatherer societies. Furthermore, the layout and design of Wobleki Tepe suggests that a deliberate architectural plan with the circular and rectangular enclosures arranged in a specific pattern. The positioning of the T-shaped pillars and the alignment of the structures with celestial events indicates sophisticated understanding of astronomy and of the natural world. This raises the possibility that Gobleki Tepe served not only as a religious or ceremonial site, but also as a centre for knowledge exchange and observation of the cosmos. Archaeologists have also noted that the floor of the temple's remains is liquid impermeable. This design may show that the people performed ceremonies accompanied by a liquid, whether it be blood, water, alcohol, etc. As a result of the surveys in the region, the ancestor of wheat, which is an important cultural plant and has hundreds of genetic variations, was first raised on the foothills of Gobleki Tepe. This has led to some speculating the exchanges of information between different groups at this site may have even led to the birth of agriculture. The findings also indicate that the Stone Age people drank beer. In the excavations, six beer barrels were found carved into the limestone. The largest had a capacity of 160 litres. In light of these findings, it is believed that humans first began farming for beer and not for bread, and this happened for the first time in Urfa. Gobleki Tepe stands as a testament to the ingenuity, creativity and communal spirit of our ancient ancestors. Its significance goes beyond its age and architectural grandeur. It challenges us to rethink our assumptions about the early stages of human civilization and the capabilities of hunter-gatherer societies. As ongoing research sheds more light on this enigmatic site, we can expect to uncover new insights into the origins of human culture and the ways in which our ancestors interacted with their environment and with each other. Gobleki Tepe remains a symbol of our shared heritage and a reminder of the enduring mysteries of the past. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.